Hey everybody, welcome back to the homestead. Well, it's going to be a busy week here on the homestead. We have lots of exciting things about to happen. This is the time of year where so many things that we've been working on kind of start to come together. Today, I need to get the pig pen ready because we're supposed to be going to pick up the piglets later this week, and I don't exactly have everything finished up. If you remember about a month or so ago, I did expand their area. I ran new electric wire uh, so that they have a nice big area. It's probably a, a quarter acre or more of land that they're gonna have back in the woods for when they're bigger. But today I'm getting together just their pen that they'll start in. I've already put up the hog panels. It's going to be a 16 foot by 16 foot pen and I built them a little shelter. But today I need to get their feeder and their water ready, and I'm going to run some electric wire along the top of the hog panels just as some extra security to help keep predators out. So we got a lot to do. I also need to go and weed eat the entire length of the other uh, electric fence that we have for them just to make sure everything is working exactly the way it should. I've got a few things loaded in the tractor already to take back there, but I need to get a few more things from the barn so let's get going. The weather's starting to get hot. I want to get back there in the shade and start getting to work. This is the pen that I built for them that they'll start out in. Now they'll only be in here for a couple weeks until they get big enough that they can be left out. Then they'll have this whole area. Again, it goes about 200 feet that way and about 100 feet that way. Uh, and it's a, it'll just be a great area for them to be able to uh, grow and really just uh, be pigs. So we'll raise them back here until their butcher size, which would be about 250 to 300 pounds. Uh, but that'll be months from now uh, when they finally get to that size. So the first thing that I'm going to do today is weed eat around the entire big pen. You can see that the weeds are growing up and touching the electric fence. So we need to make sure that that's not happening. And then after that, we're going to come back and we're going to run some electric fence. I think two strands of electric wire uh, on these T-posts all the way around this pen. Again, this is a 16 foot by 16 foot pen just made out of hog panels and this will be where we bring them home to later this week. All right, well the weed eating's all done, the fence is clear, and now we'll just go ahead and we'll start hooking up the electric wire on the actual uh, starter pen that we have built for them. All right, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna put two of these T-post insulators on each one of these T-posts right above the uh, hog panels. If you're not familiar with how these work, these are just a plastic insulator that you can just clip right onto the T-post. This will hold the wire away from the T-post so that the T-post doesn't come, become electrified. And I think we're gonna do two strands on here and I think that'll be enough to keep out any predators that might come around. I don't really suspect that we're gonna have a problem with predators anyway uh, because the piglets are going to be uh, probably about 40 pounds when we get them, which is plenty big to, you know, most predators won't come after them. So. Uh, but we're going to go ahead, I'd rather be safe than sorry, we're going to go ahead and put these all the way around. And then in one section we're going to put some gate handles so that if I want to get in and out, we can. If you're being observant, one thing you may have noticed is on the pig pen that I've built here, I didn't put a gate. Uh, I'll tell you why. Uh, the first reason is because I didn't have a gate to put on it. The second reason is because last year I did put a gate on our pig pen and we never once used it. We all just step over the fence to get into the pig pen. Now when I do want it, want to let them out after they're ready to just have this whole big area, I'll just take down one side of this pen and let them out that way. Uh, it'll be easy enough, didn't have to invest the money in a gate, 
and these hog panels really are not very tall they're really easy just to step over so uh, that's the way I went for it this year I think it's a good decision and we'll just uh, make it work All right, all of the insulators are on the T-post, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just run my wire. I'm going to start here, and we're going to run wire all the way around. We're going to run, again, two strands. Now, it was just a couple of these insulators short, uh, so I had to skip a couple T-posts, but I think it'll be fine. Uh, if I really need to, I'll pick up another bag next time I'm in town, but I think what I have is going to be just fine. So we're going to run this through, and then I'll show you how we connect this to our main electric fence as a power source. So I got the wire up all the way around the pen, but I wanted to show you a couple areas where I had to uh, kind of come up with a solution for. One thing, uh, when you're using a lot of electric fence or electric wire around your homestead, a good thing to always have on hand is some old garden hose. Uh, whenever one of our garden hoses breaks, I just cut off you know, any usable parts and save the hose part uh, for exactly situations like this. Uh, you can see here that the wire is rubbing up against this little cedar tree right here. And I don't really want to do anything to hurt this tree. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build an insulator out of this piece of garden hose. Uh, just like I did here for the top one, we're going to do now here on this bottom strand to protect so that the wire isn't hitting the tree, uh, but it also won't do any permanent damage to the tree. So all we're going to do is start by cutting off a little piece of old garden hose. And then I'll show you how we can wire it to the tree to make a perfect little insulator. All right, so we've got our little piece of hose. What we're going to do is we're going to cut lengthwise all the way along the hose to make a slit in it. And then we're going to slide that onto our wire. Just like that. And now we just have to wire that into place so that it stays on the tree. Okay, so you want your slit to be facing out when you're doing this. So what I do is I take just another piece of my electric wire. And I wrap it around this end twice. Like that, and then we come around the tree. And around the hose on that side. And that way it'll hold it nice and tight against the tree. This wire that we're wrapping around doesn't have any way to touch the wire that's going through the inside. 
and we'll just tighten this all up and it'll be perfectly insulated from the tree. All right, now that we have our wire run all the way around, the next thing we wanna do is build a gate through these wires so that we can get in. I've decided that I want it to be right here and the type of thing that I'm going to use to make this are these spring loaded handles right here. If you saw the video that I did where we were setting up the actual big pig electric fence, these are the same types of handles that I used for that. Uh, these work really, really well. They're easy to install and easy to use. Let me show you how they work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by cutting where I want the width of the gate to be. Now, I don't think it needs to be any wider from here to that T-post. So we're going to cut that. Now that made the, the fence a little bit loose. Now this isn't a super tight fence because this isn't you know, a permanent thing. So all I'm going to do is I'm gonna just wrap it around this insulator a couple times to keep the rest of the fence over here tight. And now we've got this piece here that we can use as our gate. So for this piece, all we'll do is we'll take the end of that and we'll put it here through this handle. And then we'll just loop that really tight through that handle. And you can see that this is a spring here. So we'll twist this together onto that spring. like that and now we'll come over here and this piece that we took off is where we'll make a loop so that this can hook on and then our, our gate will be complete. There's number one. Let me show you the second one. Alright, so just like before the first thing we're going to do is cut this piece of wire and that leaves this where we'll build our loop and this is our gate now we'll come over and we'll tighten this on the t-post over here so we'll just pull this tight and just wrap it around that insulator a couple times to hold it tight and now we've got this piece loose the rest of the fence is still nice and tight now what we'll do is we'll take our gate handle and again this just slips through this metal spring hits the metal wire. And we'll just connect those like that. Now we'll go down to the other side and we'll build our loop and our gate will be complete. All right, so you can see that this matches up about right. And when we pull that, we want that to be able to be nice and tight. So we'll make a loop on here. It doesn't have to be a very big loop, just big enough for that little hook to go through. That hooks on nice and tight. So now our gate here is complete. And now, uh, now that the gate is complete, we have a way to get in and out of the pig pen um, without you know having to go over the wire every time. We can just simply take this off and use it like that. All right, now that we have our wire all the way done and we have our weed eating done, uh, we can go ahead and actually energize these new wires that we put up. For that, we're just going to use a jumper wire from our main fence over to here. Again, uh, they'll only be in this pen for a couple of weeks, so this is a very temporary setup here. And so we're not going to do anything to make this too permanent. I didn't want to move my energizer and put in another grounding rod and all of that. So we're just gonna use a jumper off of our main fence. That way the main perimeter fence will be on and this will be on at the same time. Now I know the main perimeter fence won't keep predators out because it's only about 18 inches tall, uh, but you never know, it might help keep a couple things out. So uh, we're going to just run a jumper wire and we're gonna do basically the same thing we did by the tree. We're gonna use a piece of garden hose as an insulator. We're just gonna run a wire all the way through that piece of garden hose. 
All right, so I've cut a piece of our galvanized wire that reaches from our new fence over to our old fence. And I've also got a piece of old garden hose, the same length or just a little bit shorter than our wire. And what we're going to do is we're just going to thread this wire all the way through the piece of garden hose until we see it come out the other end. Ideally, you want just a couple inches sticking out of each end. All right, now that that is threaded all the way through, we'll just find a spot on our new fence and a spot on our old fence to hook the two ends, and then we should be all set. All right, I went and got my fence tester, and let's go ahead and test this out. If everything is hooked up correctly, uh, the main fence here should be the same as the new fence, or actually the new fence should be the same as the existing fence. So looks like the existing fence is four kilovolts or 4,000 volts. On both strands, let's go check out the new fence. Four kilovolts. And four kilovolts. So that's perfect. That means that now these new strands are electrified and if a predator comes up and decides it's gonna kind of stick its head up here to see if it can go over to hurt the piglets, uh, it'll hit these wires and hopefully change its mind. Like I said, I don't really anticipate a problem. We've never had a problem in the past, but you can never be too safe, especially when you're raising them kind of back in the woods. Now, to give you some perspective though, this isn't very far. Our barn is only about maybe 100 feet or so that way, maybe a little bit more. Uh, so it's not like we're deep back in the woods. Uh, there is a lot of commotion in this area uh, throughout the day and most wild animals really don't come up into this area. All right, so now that we're done with this part of the project, we can load up our tools, take them back to the barn, and then we'll go get our feeders and our waterer that we can hook up so that that is all set when we bring the piglets home in a few days. So the first thing that we're going to hook up now that we have the wire done is our waterer. For our pigs, we use a nipple style waterer that we built out of a 55 gallon drum. And then it's just got these uh, two waterers at the bottom, two nipples at the bottom. And the pigs will simply bite down on that and the water will come out. Uh, I think these are probably one of the best types of waterers for pigs. Uh, you know, holds plenty of water and they, it stays nice and clean in here. So I'm going to build it over in this corner of the pen here. This is closest. This is the closest corner to where our cow, new cow barn is. And since we're going to be catching water off of that barn eventually, uh, so that we can have rainwater over here, uh, I want this as close as possible so I don't have to run a really long hose from there to here. Perfect, that should be just fine. Uh, once it's filled up with water, it'll be nice and sturdy. I'm not gonna fill it up today, uh, but it should be just fine. Uh, to start off with, I only put it one block up. As the pigs get bigger, I may raise it up a little more. Uh, but for now, this is about the perfect height off the ground so that these uh, piglets will be able to drink. All right, let's go set up the feeders. All right, so these are the types of feeders that we like for our little piglets when we first get them. Uh, these are actually dog feeders. They're automatic dog feeders. You fill them up here and they'll hold about, I don't know, 20 pounds of food each or something like that. And then the pigs can just use their head to go in here and eat out of the here. And it shuts up and it stays, it keeps it pretty dry when, uh, when it rains. It doesn't work perfectly, but it works pretty good. And these are great when they're real little. We've raised several uh, sets of pigs already on these and they're still working just fine. Now, when they get bigger and we let them out into the big pen area, then we have a bigger feeder that holds like 200 pounds of feed at a time. Uh, but I'm not gonna use that just yet. So uh, I'm gonna get these set up. I'm gonna put them 
over here in this corner and I have a little piece of a pallet that I cut that holds these just a little bit off the ground to keep them uh, out of the rain if it uh, gets wet out uh, and I'm just going to use some boards to attach them to the fence. All right, the water is hooked up, the feeder's hooked up, we ran the electric wire, everything is working as it's supposed to. Now we're all set in just a few days, we'll be able to bring these piglets home. I feel confident that we're ready for them, and I am excited to finally get some pigs back here on the homestead. I still say that I think pigs are my favorite animal to raise. I absolutely love them, and I can't wait for them to have uh, this nice new bigger area that we made for them this year. Let's head back up to the house. Hey guys! Well a while back we talked with you about planting a bunch of sunflowers and a few days ago Kevin tilled up this long strip in front of the road and all along the front of our property and we planted sunflowers and they're starting to come up! It is so exciting. We planted the black oil sunflower seeds with the hopes of this fall pressing the sunflower seeds and getting our own oil. Yeah, we have no idea if this will work. We have no idea if the birds are just gonna end up eating them all or if we'll actually uh, be able to make our own sunflower oil this fall. Uh, but it's gonna be a fun experiment. If nothing else, it's gonna be cool just to see all of these sunflowers here. This area is about 300 feet, maybe a little bit more, I think, and we put five rows of sunflowers across here. It's six feet wide, and we planted five rows all the way along. So it should be pretty cool when they come up. Uh, we're crossing our fingers that we're keeping the birds and the squirrels out, uh, but so far it looks like a lot of them are starting to come up. We might have to bring our old, worn-out scarecrow uh, he's still hanging around over by the compost pile, so we might bring him out. Uh, but we are very hopeful, and if nothing else, this is just a fun project. Yeah. So you guys, thanks for spending the day with me back in the woods, uh, getting ready for the pigs. I'm so excited to finally have pigs back on the homestead. Uh, I hope you're going to enjoy seeing this experiment that we're doing up here with the sunflowers. As that progresses throughout the summer, uh, it's going to be really kind of neat. You guys, if you're enjoying our videos, please consider subscribing. We would appreciate it. And also share it with your friends and family who may enjoy it as well. And until next time, thank you so much for stopping by the homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.